Hello! Welcome back. Good to see you all to another episode of All Gathered Up, the show that runs parallel to the Great British Sewing Bee. And it looks at techniques and skills that perhaps come up in each episode. But you know what the sewing bee is like. It goes so quick. There's never enough time to really see how did they do that? Well, we can here because we've got more time. And of course, you know, we have the experts, Master Taylor Couturier, Carol and Aim with us. Hello, Carol again. Hello, Stuart. Nice to be back. Episode two. I admit just, yes. Travel week. Uh, and it, I suppose it was it was about uh, clothes that yeah come up on, on travel. So we had the rucksack. We had uh, the swimsuits. <laughs> um, and then the transformation challenge, which was a bit fun, wasn't it? With the, the windbreakers. Uh, into a raincoat, but I think Esme said there there were like bonus points for for making it. What was her words? Let's have a look. Um, improvised rainwear, exciting sculptural garments, and I think that's what you're you're going to uh, talk us through today. Is that right? You know, I was thinking about the last two episodes, and and they want to see uh, something over and above. You know, they want to see something special, sculptural. They call it dramatic influence in a garment and I thought that might be an interesting topic how do you put drama into a garment I mean there's plenty of drama in the workroom you know because <laughs> too much time, yeah absolutely you know competition and limited with time yeah. so that's one kind of drama but how do you you know introduce dr drama into a garment so that that's I thought that'd be a good thing to talk about today a wonderful topic I wouldn't know where to start I'm just trying to think I suppose um, drama, the obvious one, would be like what they had to do, and that's adding something spectacular. You know, like they were saying with the raincoats, I think one of them had a big neck thing, uh, like Queen Elizabeth I. Elizabeth. So, so I, I suppose building on or, or making big, how would you do it, that, though? I think you hit it, really. It's about creating sculpture and adding something on that, you know, kind of takes flight. It doesn't sit normally in, in the, you know, the posture of a garment, you know, like we had some simple swimsuits, but then we had swimsuits with big ruffles and we had, you know, sleeves out of, um, uh, what do you call that fabric? I um, the, the scuba oh, fabric. Scuba. It's about building bigger. And there are two ways to do that, really. You can have a sculptural element or you can use color. Um, oh. You have to choose a fabric that's going to perform, of course. Um, and the fabric needs to speak, you know, that it's sparkly or it's iridescent or pearlescent or you can use high contrast colors. But those are really the two obvious ways, sculpture and color. OK, well, mm. let's start off then with sculpture and, and trying to, to sculpt something amazing. Now, how, how do we do that in the most simplest way? Well, I've got some examples. Um, I'd like to bring back something we talked about last week, oh, if cool. I may. Oh, right, yeah. Oh, what? The, oh, yes, you the French this. seam lady. And I just thought this is a perfect example of adding on sculpture. OK, so we've got this. This is a flutter sleeve, and obviously this adds sculpture. It's not mm. your normal, but it takes flight, it speaks, and you have to see, perceive this with color. So let's say you use two different high contrast colors, maybe complementary colors, oh. purple and yellow, red and green, using the color wheel. Um, but remember how we created this, Mm, is with, with great we difficulty. Had, <laughs> well, we had our normal sleeve line, okay, yes. which is an oval shape, right? And then we just cut a sleeve which was congruent to that oval, oval shape. So it's, it's, we decide on a depth down here. Yeah, yeah. And then we decide on a length up here so that when it falls. Oh. There's your sculpture, and you get these beautiful trumpets. And if you remember the twist, the garment, the, the top with a twist last week, yeah. that had a bit of a butterfly sleeve, and we talked about these trumpets. So the more volume you add, when it falls, 
it falls in these lovely trumpets. Yeah. And the more you have, the more sculpture you have. So I wanted to just bring that back. And I think, Stuart, remind me, we had a question. Oh, uh, we sure did. Uh, um, okay. Your, By the way, everyone, your comments on our last video was lovely. Uh, and it's been lovely to see some of you have just come on board. You've, you've just found us, which is really, really nice. Um, but yes, we had, let's just drop this into the computer here down the bottom there from Pauline. Um, look, look what she said, first of all. So please, Carol and Stuart, you're back on All Gathered Up. Thanks, Pauline, hey. for those nice words. She goes, I've been looking forward to this as much as the, as the sewing bee itself. Question oh, for nice. Carol. I use French seams quite a bit, but I've never sewn in sleeves using French seams. Okay. She says, I clip the curves when putting in sleeves. How do you deal with that, Carol? Okay, well, thank you, Pauline. That's a really good, interesting question. When you're doing a normal um, French seam, normally it's a straight seam, isn't it? Now we've got to curve. And normally a sleeve will have ease in it, built yeah. in ease to fall over the shoulder. It's difficult to add in, to, to feed in that ease in a French seam. It's much better if you're working with two flat sections of fabric that marry up. So what I did with this sleeve, Pauline, is I made sure that the sleeve matched the of Ooh. the oval of the Okay. Typical. So that, say, uh, you had a, we had a bit of uh, stutter from the camera just as you said something. <laughs> Let's just say that again. <laughs> so you did. All right. You, go on. Okay. We talk about m most of the time a sleeve will have ease into the armhole, and it's normally around the crown. Yeah. So sleeve is bigger than the arm circle. So if you're going to put a sleeve in a French seam. You need to take out that ease so that you have an equal measurement in the arm circle. Okay, so just remove that ease so you're working with a flat seam. And then you are talking about the fact that some patterns have five eighths of an inch seam allowance, which is a large seam allowance. So that's all right. You can sew your first pass, your first seam, with wrong sides together, sew that at a centimeter or three eighths, and then trim that back to an eighth. Ah, right. So don't trim it first, just sew a bigger seam at three eighths, then trim it back to one eighth. Now you've got two eighths or one quarter of an inch left. Okay. So then when you press that seam opened and to one side or however you want to fix it, then you flip your, your two pieces of fabric around so that you now have right sides together to sew your second seam. Uh -huh. You can use your presser foot or anything with a quarter of an inch guide and sew your second seam. So it doesn't matter if you have a bigger seam allowance. Just work out, you know, instead of trimming and giving yourself trouble. If it's a 5 8 seam, so a one centimeter or three eighths, trim it, and then you have two eighths left to turn okay. your fabric around. Okay. Does that, and I hope that makes sense and it's clear. And if it's not, we'll talk about it more. So just Absol let me know, Polly. Okay? Absolutely. And there were, there were, I say, lovely comments there. Uh, and we've said it ever since doing this, this is our third year now. If there are yeah. uh, questions or things you want reinforcing or just covering over, Please just say them. Uh, we, we never get fed up of talking about it. And we this this is the time to, to talk all about sewing. And, and there are so many people writing like, oh, I get to talk about sewing because uh, someone said, um, I don't I don't have any friends to talk sewing with. Um, so please do so. And uh, there is never uh, a question. Please don't, you know, because oh, this is my teaching background. And I know there were pupils that would just be too frightened to put their hands up because they think their question is silly. There is never a silly question at all. Yeah. Uh, we're all at different stages of learning 
and we have everyone here. This is not, the, we've got advanced people, we've got beginners, um, and everyone loves uh, hearing answers because we all do things in different ways, don't we, Carol? You can find your own way that suits you, but it could be a completely different method to what Carol or someone else is using. That's true, and a lot of times you, you can have this explained, you've got to practice it through, and then you, you make it your own. That's what sewing is all about. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Brilliant. Well, that's lovely seeing uh, Miss French Lady yeah. back. Yeah. yeah. So that's but one really, way of creating That's, that's one way of drama. creating drama is using sculpture and taking a sleeve and just opening the sleeve up, adding in fabric so that when that sleeve falls, it's got a lot more girth, a lot more volume yeah. to it. And also, Can I bring in? Yeah. Well, I was just about to say, uh, Lady, Gold Lady at the back, there's some drama there because you've You've taken away fabric. You've 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 lost now, the shoulder. That's drama, isn't it? Now this, I I thought about this today because because of the time elements. Now let me see if I can get this. Oh, okay. God, so, I love that fabric. Haven't you? Now I <laughs> I have in my studio this bolt of fabric. It was given to me. This is actually this is upholstery fabric. Okay, it's silk damask. So it's got a really lovely uh, property about it. And I bet a it's, nice... Is it heavy? I bet it's heavy if it's upholstery fabric yeah. or thick. Yeah, it's thick, but it's got an iridescence. It's got Absolutely. a jacquard. It's got a texture with a print. And then it's got that really beautiful uh, pearlescence about it. And I was thinking, what what would I do if I had you know, 90 minutes or two hours or whatever. So yeah. I have this, yeah. So this you, is about yes. So that's your brief, Carol. You've got to yeah. create, well, let's skip the rainwear bit, but you've got to have <laughs> an exciting sculptural bit to it. Yeah. So I thought, okay, let's do an off-the-shoulder dress just by wrapping the fabric around the mannequin, okay? Oh, so, so you haven't cut anything there. You've just wrapped. No, no it's just wrapped. It's just draped. Nothing is cut. Okay, and it actually looks like quite an interesting, really nice piece, doesn't it? I'd like to walk down the catwalk with that uh, gold oh. lady on my arm. Of course, and it's it's got drama, it's got sculpture. It, it's it. a lovely, it's using the best qualities of this fabric, I think. So I started by just wrapping the cloth around and securing it at this shoulder. Okay, I put a couple of stitches in there just to hold it in place. Now the fabric's wrapped around the body form, and then I, and then I decided to put a seam in with using pins. Can everybody see that? Yeah. Is that? Here? Yeah. Oh, so you've pinned that in. I pinned it in, just pinned it into the waist, just drew the fabric in, set some pins out. Now what that leaves us with is. An armhole, see that's free. Yeah. And then this is all closed off as high as you want. Okay, so once you get past the hip, then you can you can split it, and then you can show some leg on the side there. But what you're left with are these two drapes, which are really oh. lovely. Okay. It's it's armhole. kind of reminiscent of. Am I getting this right? S sorry. Kind of a sari. Where they Absolutely. have that excess fabric. Do they have that excess fabric or is it going over the back? I don't know. That's about Grecian and the toga. Oh, and that yes, idea. toga. Right, yes, yeah. So here's where I would put a zip. Oh. Right here. So that's how you'd get into it. Yeah. All right? Now, it could be a concealed zip. It could be a separating zip. It could be a two-way zip, whatever. You can... Show the zip. I could so say, it if you want it, it sculptural or, or to create drama, would you put a cool zip in it and make it an yeah, eye? Yeah, an you, eye? yeah, a really cool. You could put a, a, yeah. a, a lame zip in it, oh. right? So whatever you, however you wanted to close this off. Now the other side, and incidentally, here's the back view. Okay, that's quite good. So you've got this lovely drape here. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm gonna spin it around the other way. And I'm going to just bring this a little bit forward. Oh, look. So now you've got some. Oh, that's it. Yeah, you could. Please. Now, I, right here, I've got a needle and thread, which I don't know that you can see. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can I, see that. 
Yep, there's my, all I'm doing is taking the side seam here, right? And I'm going to take this needle thread and I'm just going to, now I'm sewing left-handed now, people. Um, so I'm going to just sew, just move up with a gather line and then fix this. Now you can hide your stitches. I'm just doing this really quickly for you to show you how you would just set these, set these pleats in so they're fixed. Okay, so now uh, you've got this. And because we're using this silk damask, it's, look how obedient it is. It isn't just, it? Yeah. It just has its shape. And that's really one. So pick a cloth that's going to cooperate with you. Okay, if this is a really slippery cloth that didn't have this posture, you'd have no. a problem. So if you want to put drama into your clothes, it does start with the fabric. And we talked about this with the twisty top. Yeah. You know, we, you know, Asma's was almost too limp, but she had a lovely print on it. Yeah. Esme suggested you use cotton, but that kind of put a little bit too much bulk in the twist. Yeah. Didn't it? Yeah, There's absolutely. Something in between. So choose the cloth that's going to, you know, work with you and get the best out of what you have in mind. So you need something to work with you. So here's a here's a dress that took no more than 30 minutes to put together. And all we have to do is cut our hemline and put a zip in. And it's done. Okay? Yeah. So clever. Yeah. A drama is wonderful and it doesn't mean that it's going to be a huge effort. It's going to be difficult. It is you going see, to take that's you days. The thing. And you often can get carried away, right, I've got to create drama or I've got to create an exciting sculptured garment and then think that uh, drama or exciting means huge. So you've got to do something big to to win, but actually you don't at all. Exciting can be I say just having that shoulder revealed um, mm -hmm. and not having it equal. That's something different, yeah. isn't it? It is. You're right. Or and small. this is the art of, yeah, or small. This is the art of draping. So a lot of times it, it, what I like to do is to just take a piece of fabric and throw it at a mannequin and just work with it. Instead of starting with a, a drawing and then transferring the drawing to the flat pattern, cutting that, assembling it, and then you have to go through all that back and forth until you achieve what, what it is that you want. And sometimes, and we, we'll talk about this, especially with the swimwear, you've got a drawing, but then you've got fabric that kind of goes all over the place. It's a four-way stretch, does what it's want. You know, it's got a mind of its own, this cloth. So you, you designed a fitted garment, but the fabric isn't going to go along mm -hmm. with you. It's not going to co so if I may I've got a, I'd like to show you one more garment do it okay which yeah. is more this has this come up came about from a flat pattern idea okay we just saw a draping exercise where you'd simply just wrap fabric around a mannequin and 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 form it that way Work from there okay here's here's an idea this is um a, a, a startup that I'm working with now let's just go back a little bit Here's how we can create drama by using color, okay, instead of the sculpture. So here I've got wow. what is a little black drama, but we're making it, it exciting using a high contrast color. And again, we're taking a fabric that's going to work with us. And we want this mm. to hold its own. We want the sleeve to be a separate sculpture, okay? The dress is just a basic wispy, you know, kind of a mohair wool. And so what I've done, I'm not sure I can put this across, but can you see that the sleeve is a raw edge? Oh, wow. See that? Yes. Of the, of the pink the, cerise fabric. Yeah. yeah. Cerise fabric is just laid on. It's not a, it's, it's not set in. Okay. And the shape of this I've changed the underarm so that it's actually a square. It's got a point. It's a square point. I'll be really disappointed if I can't show this, and maybe I can't. But this is 
sleeve come down and then it goes straight across. It does go flat, yes. Uh, the, yeah. Um, yeah, I, we, we could just see that. If you just lift up that pink a little bit more, is it there? Yeah. That underarm, yes, now I can see it straight. Yes, absolutely there. Uh, the camera's a bit jottery. The wonders of the internet. Uh, it looks like you're, <laughs> you're uh, I, I'm smooth, but I think you're a bit jottery, but I can still see that straight. So it's just literally horizontal. Yeah, it's horizontal. So I've changed the sleeve line a little bit to, to, to just make that a bit more interesting. But it, just to show you another way that you can create drama in a garment by just using a high a, a higher contrast cloth, mm. and then you do whatever you want with that sleeve, okay? But, but and then is, and it's still sculptured though as well. It's some lovely sculpture there, isn't it? That's right, because I've got a fabric which is this is a synthetic cloth, but it's it's thicker. And it, it's the way that the threads are chosen and woven, it's got that shine on it. It's got yeah. a, an iridescence about it. It's not a flat pink. It's a glowy pink. It's a neon pink. But it's um, it, it's certainly, if you look at, you know, which we've seen come up several times now, this idea of uh, sculpted or exciting or um, trying to catch the eye, that works because of the colour change, simple colour change. If that was black sleeve, it wouldn't be as exciting would it no you wouldn't even notice it and it would look like a blob you know yeah. on the side of yeah but now you know you know we, we know what we're, we're working yeah. with now and we know it's a black dress with pink sleeves and it's modern and it's mm. you know it 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 can look uh casual uh, because it's got raw edges and it's fraying a little bit you know around the sleeve cap um so it's no. youthful Oh, it. yes. Now, so that's, I think, a delicate and simple way of creating drama in clothes and, and, and sculpt, sculpturing something to have an effect. You could go all out and big. Like, can you remember that garment from Strictly last year when we were doing the Strictly episodes? And mm -hmm. it was, I want to say that it might have been the Samba um, and um, I can't remember the, the, the girl's name, but she was in red and green and her dress was flowing, but they had wonderful sculpture in it because of this. Oh, I can't remember what it was called. Not boning. It was a type of boning. It's got a certain name. Can you oh, remember? Was it, was it a crinoline? That's it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that's a, that's a bias woven. Um, it, it, because it's made of nylon, it, it holds shape like boning does. Um, so they put that in on the edges, and That's then it. it just it helps. It's like a hula hoop, but That's it. a fluid hula hoop. And that was stunning drama, really, wasn't it? But. The sculptureness of it, if that's such a thing, was phenomenal, wasn't it? Because there was all these... But that was big and in your face. So there are many ways of showing sculpture. It doesn't... Because we tend to think sculptures, well, you think they're big things. But actually, you can have the smallest thing sculptured and it looks absolutely wonderful. You're right. It's about putting weight or width into something. So when you use the boning, um, it, it just holds the fabric out to the... the the biggest dis you know the distance of the boning or the crinoline um so that yeah that just creates the most length in in um you know the hemline or wherever you wherever you're installing it um and uh so very effective like you say adding yeah. sculpture but um putting in architecture it's, that it's holds yeah it. it's being able to as I say, think differently sometimes, not have to think, all right, um, something exciting or something dramatic has to be big. It can be quite small, yet still be significant. Um, I know you've done a, a lot of theatrical wear uh, in your mm -hmm. time uh, when you want to create something dramatic. It, would you, if you're thinking, oh, yes, I've got to go for something big, or actually would you think, oh, no, let's do something small, but you know, small but cool, what would your preference be? Or would you go, yeah, loads of crinoline and loads of boning? <laughs> what would you do? You know, here's, uh, here's what comes to mind for me. It's what's the space we're working in? Right. What's the lighting? What's the sight lines? Where's the distance between the audience to the performer? Um, what's, 
what are we forming? Is it something that's, you know, is it, um, is it light and airy and loud and, you know, is it Carmen? Yeah. <laughs> or is it something, you know, more subdued? Is it uh, a more, um, yeah. It, it's a very it, good point. What's the, tone? Yeah. what's the tone? So, you know, say in Les Miserables with, with the, um, the wedding scene, you know, that dress is, it, it's, it's bright white. It's loads of lace, loads of layers. Um, but also it has to look a bit stressed because that in the story, mm. it's not a bright white wedding dress. So it's, it all has to do with the, the script, the, um, the screenplay, mm, okay. the song, singing, the whatever. And, and what's going to catch the light if you want it to. Sequence and beads and things like that, that ricochet off lights are so wonderful. And it just scatters, yeah. you know, the you know, the, the light around the stage. It just depends on what you want. And of course, then there's a balance. Yeah. Um, is the performer being too boastful with their garment, not serious enough about the music? So that it all comes into play, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. But as you rightly say, probably even the first thing is the cloth, isn't it? The choice mm. of cloth. Mm. And, yeah, absolutely. And, and the weight of it. Um, yeah. We're going to talk about the challenges, and when we get to the transformation challenge, I've got another garment I'd like to bring out if I can. Okay, cool. Yes. Well, um, right. now we were talking about zips, weren't we, in that gold lady dress, having a, a cool, you know, maybe a, a big obvious zip. I know it came up in the rucksack challenge, and you 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 spotted something there. Maybe it was to do with the zipper foot. So let's let's talk about zips now. Okay. Well. In the, um, the first uh, challenge, we're going to make a rug sack and we have to install a zip in the pocket. Yep. Okay. And that zip was put in a seam, which was sewn on a very big stitch, a basting stitch. Then the zip was put face down. And then there was some top stitching applied, installing the zip. And then the basting stitches were removed. Now, I remember, and I need to watch it again, but I remember that top stitching being one of the criteria mm. that Esme mm. said has to be straight, especially if you're working with a contrast thread. So I thought, well, that's interesting because you're working upside down. So how do you make sure something is even? And I did notice that most everyone used this big, wide, plastic, see-through presser foot, which I thought was a bit wide for the challenge. Okay. So I thought, and I wondered if they were using a, a zipper foot, if they had a zipper foot attachment in their tools toolkit. I would have thought so, yeah. But I didn't see anybody use one. Ah. And people ran into trouble. So I thought I'd just do a little bit of a tutorial about how to avoid Okay, that. you're going over to your sewing okay. machine, are you? Go, go over to the sewing machine. All right, let's so, go over to Carol Cam. <laughs> Here we go. I get my right button. Where are we? There we go. Okay, so here I am at the machine. I can. I hope everyone can see this. Stuart, you, Stuart, you tell me. Yeah, yeah, I can see right. Uh, it's a bit pixelated, but um, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so what I just wanted to point out is you've got your zipper, the, the teeth here are your zipper foot, and your presser foot can only get this most. It can't obviously ride over these. This no. Team. So you're, you've got two things governing the installation of this. One, you've got your seam allowance here of the main fabric, and you've got your teeth of the zip. And what you want to do is you want to ride alongside your the teeth of the zip. And the way to get this uh, even when you're finished is to make sure that you're centered. So the, the whole zip is centered in the seam allowance. So you can see on this side, I've got about an eight, uh, 16th of an inch. Yeah. And I've got an 16th of an inch here too. So you need to make sure. I'm just going to go ahead and sew that. Okay. So your zip of uh, your foot is right up to the teeth, isn't it? Right up to the teeth. Yeah. Now, if I had a zipper foot, this is a normal sewing that's a, foot. I was going to say, that's a normal foot, isn't it? Yeah. 
normal foot. So, and then you need to pass the end bit here. Yep. See that end bit? I'm not yep. going to pass it. So I need one more stitch. Again, make sure that you've got the same amount of space here that you have there on your seam allowance. I think if I sew one more big stitch, then I'll clear that. You see? So I've got you've got to clear this end bit That's on the zip here. Bit. Yeah. So now I now I'm going to come across, and you just have to eyeball this, so that the teeth are now riding alongside the end of the zipper foot, which is here. Okay. Now I'm hoping that makes sense. As you're sewing, just check the distance again. Check that the the distance of the fabric you have outside the zipper tape is equal to the distance you have here outside of that zipper tape. And then the complication comes in up here. Yeah, with the where zip. Where you've got the pull. And this is very bulky, okay? So you just have to, and you might have to come a little bit outside it, as you can see. I'll take this pin out. And then again, you have to clear this side. We've done it. And I'm happy to do this again. I'm happy to talk about this in more detail, but I wasn't sure how the technology was going to work, but I wanted to cover this. Well, it's it's working all right. Unfortunately, it's a bit pixelated. I think it might oh, be. Dear. It's all right. It might be. Well, you've got to understand that the technology is coming out from your iPhone wirelessly, and it's going to your up in the world, coming to my computer, back out again to the world of YouTube. So it's. Yeah, it's still good though. Yeah. Okay, so this is what we're fighting. So you can you can kind of see that we're nice and parallel here. And the the reason we're nice and parallel in this box is because when we set it up, we set it up so that we were even here. But yeah. maybe this is the best exercise to show um with our technology which haven't quite worked out yet, but I think next week, Stuart, we'll have, um, I'll have my tech expert here and maybe um, oh. Mike can help me differently. No, I think, I think all it is, is, is when, when it moves. So now it's stopped, it's crystal clear now. I can see your, your red thread and I can, I, yeah. I can see. But um, you've done that on a normal foot. So, and that's, yes. so if you had a zipper foot, would that red thread be even closer to the teeth? Yes, and then it would also be closer, let's see, let me just bring this down. And I, I wanted to do this to show you how difficult it is when you're using a normal foot. Can yeah. you see how it it, it, it it skates around this and it's not even? Yeah. So again, like last week, I'm kind of letting you know what goes wrong. Yeah. And if I flip this and, and if it's still, now you can see. Um, that can you see the bulges here absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. It, it will it will so but you see how nice and even it is here yeah yeah that's oh, well, really... that's it. it's rendered now i can see it now yeah uh, the corners are lovely here the distance here is equal but without using a zipper foot this is what happens ah. and saw that in some of the results on that front pocket so we did. I, it just they should have had a zipper foot in their toolkit in the machine and then they could avoid this problem here or some okay. did have a zipper foot and they used it and some didn't because they didn't know they had a zipper foot i suppose it's something we'll never know um or they did have a zipper foot and it still looked terrible. <laughs> I think we'll we'll get our, our viewers might go back on iPlayer and, and sleuth it out and see. But I think you would have uh, spotted then, you would have spotted a, a, a zipper foot if you'd seen it, wouldn't you? I would have. Yes, and I yeah. didn't. And then you just take your unpicker, see, and then you just remove the basting threads, and there's your zip there. It's all you know. It's it's good and it's in working order now. You see. Fabulous. Okay, so that's just something to, um, I hope that's helpful to the viewers because it's, um, it's about getting, you need to make sure that your work is parallel. When you get to the zipper pull, 
that's when you run into trouble here because it's much thicker. So you want to do, you want to have a zipper put so you can get straight in there and keep yeah. your lines parallel. Oh, okay, look so at that. I can see it clearly now. It's rendered now. It looks lovely. Um, yeah. Do you change to a zipper okay. foot on that machine? That's an industrial. I suppose you go to a, a, a domestic, do you? No, I would. I have zipper foots for this. And I have right right side and left side zipper foots. So I have can you got, decide. Have you got them handy? Can you drop them on there so we can have a look? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the camera for a minute. And then I'll go in here and I'll get them. Now you know it's filmed live, because <laughs> she probably wasn't expecting that. We used to uh, record everything, and then we would record uh, our conversations. Then I would go onto the edit suite, and I would edit it uh, uh, and put it all together. But we've got this new technology where we can do it together live with extra cameras, and uh, that is, and then do it live but we're hoping to do it live live with you on youtube one night too um so uh, yeah. we we obviously can't edit this out but there's some beauty about it being live isn't there oh right there's just yeah. oh, look at that that's tiny okay so that's a tiny that's a left hand zipper foot and here's a wider left hand zipper foot okay, okay let's that, see that will that see. will render once it's still oh look and then so if i put those two together can everybody see that if I just set them up? Okay, so so this is where the needle is going to. I'm just whoops, whoops, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry if not, if they not, not going to stand. See. Oh, there you go. That will render yeah. in a little while. Yeah. Yeah, we'll let that settle in with cyberspace. So the needle position here is on the left side of the presser foot, and the needle position here goes into I that see. nook. That's yeah. on the left side. Of the foot. So, so you would and, get that. That needle, therefore, is is kissing those teeth of the zip. As close as you want, as cool. close as you want that to be, then you have all that. Uh, you've got that control yeah. using this instead of um, being at the mercy of this wider presser yeah. foot. And Which... in fact, on the zip machine. The presser foot is even wider than this. You know, it's probably overall a quarter uh, of an inch wider. I think so, yes, very much so. Because, well, we could see it. I think it was Lizzie doing it on her rucksack. Um, and because she did it in a, in a contrast thread, it was even more noticeable. And how big it was, it was a wide box, wasn't it? It was. And she had, and I, I people had to un unpick their their work I, i'm sure more people unpicked it than what we saw um, yeah because if they didn't have that zipper foot and uh, the other thing we don't know we don't know what the seam allowance was in the pattern no it's very true no yeah so if the seam allowance was say three quarters of an inch then there would have been plenty of space to complete that Absolutely. box Zip box. but we, do, we don't know that so we no. don't know the difficulty factor really but all we can do is guess and, and and we see the results and i only highlight that because that was one of their criteria when they said what's difficult about this challenge well they had i wrote this this down here they had they had uh, swivel hooks they had sliders they had the zip they had the webbing which was when it was doubled over it was very thick they had the D-ring and all these complicated um, yeah. accessories that had to be incorporated. But they did say that the top stitching was key. Yeah, and I think we've talked about top stitching on old mm -hmm. videos. You can go yeah. and see all gathered up videos last year on my site and Carol's site. You can see uh, on, on my site, it's our video where we chat together. On Carol's site, it's chopped right down so you actually see the tutorial. I think you did one on top stitching. I'm sure, I'm sure we've done it many times. I'm, I'm sure. I know we did a top stitching on pockets. So oh, yes. we, we could bring that one back up because yeah. some, it was single top stitching and then you can top stitch with a zigzag. We showed that as well. Yes. And you can put a zip in with zigzag. And that just, that takes away that pressure of having to have that straight, straight line. line. Yeah. Mm.
Yes, because you're trying to do a straight line, and of course, it, it, it especially if you're doing a top stitch and a contrast thread, if if that's not straight, then the eyes that that creates drama, doesn't it? <laughs> totally, absolutely. Now, speak, speaking of drama, can you remember two years ago with Damien and his winter Christmas office dress that zipped up? the top and it also went down to the bottom and zipped up both ways it went like that can you remember that one that was drama there, and half. double zips are very dramatic yeah <laughs> so yes. there we go when we get to the windbreak uh i can bring another garment out we'll talk about that in drama right. with a double zip well, Remind there we go. me, will you? Well, I, I will. Well, we'll we'll start talking about it now because we've had forty minutes of wonderful sort of discussion about uh, fabric mm. and uh, sculpt, how to create drama and sculpture and all those different methods of doing it. So let's go and have a quick little flick through what they uh, the bees have to do for week two travel week. So let's go to chatting about the rounds. And there we are. Um, so round one, the pattern challenge, as you just said, was the rucksack. Now, you could argue it was nice to see a different type of sewing, a different skill. It's still sewing, but it's a different type of skill. It's not, you know, sewing's not always about dressmaking, is it? So it, I think that was nice to see it. But was it a very, very demanding, as you were just saying, there were so many different elements to it. You've got the pocket there, you've got the straps, you've got to get the straps on right, the reflection of back to front, so you get the right thing. D-rings, all sorts of rings, those those sliders to leg, that was a hard challenge. It's really, it, the difficulty there was creating an adjustable. Um, yeah. It's hard to get your head around getting an, uh, putting in an adjustable strap because you're working on the inside of this circular thing. And so you're on the inside and where you lap and um, hide the seam and top stitch the seam, you're, you're working, behind, you know, it's, it's that inside outside yeah. thing, you know, which um, we talk about sewing being a game of, ops, of you know, opposites all the time. But I think this was a just stick to your knitting, go step by step, and, and just try to stay calm because yeah. every step was important. And it's not the kind of um, task where you can kind of see ahead to the finish. You can't, you can't. Mm -hmm. You have to just, you, you can only see what's happening next. So it's just that incremental thing and it's tricky. And we've not seen that before. This, this well, was a, this was a really demanding I know task. I would have got my straps around the wrong way around. <laughs> And remember, there's no there's no YouTube tutorial to watch to see it visually. They've just got a flat pattern thing to look at. So the sewers are amazing to take that from a flat instruction to work out, you know, mentally yeah. turn it this way, right side, wrong side, and so forth. But uh, there's some of them finished, some some of them didn't finish, but some did. So it, it clearly meant it it showed it was doable. But you know, we were talking about choice of fabric and the importance of cho choosing fabric. Matthew, uh, uh, did he choose? Um, did he choose the wrong fabric? Did that make it harder for him because of the fabric? Yeah, this set another. Uh, it was an, posed another set of challenges because he had to match stripes. stripes, and that was just that. If it's not cut correctly, then there's no way it's ever going to match. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's so right from the beginning, he was he he was he put himself moved. under even more stress. Bless him. He did. He did put himself under more stress, more drama. <laughs> <to get that's laughs> Absolutely. Out. <laughs> but it, I suppose it's like I don't know. It's a bet, isn't it? It's a it's a risk. Do you if you got those stripes right, he would have been top. He would have won and it, and got garment of the week. Maybe sure. you know. That's it. Yeah. And, and I suppose that with a, a task this complicated, you really want to escape from all risk because Absolutely. there's enough, you know, there's enough potential things to go wrong. Yeah. So, get, you know, yeah. at least start with a fabric that is not going to pose those risks so that the pressure is off and then you can concentrate on getting the other things right, because that would have taken time to cut that, oh. to work it out. So you're losing time by trying to get the cutting process right. Yeah. 
all those seams, you know, you've got to work out, right, have I got to do that extra? If I, I've got to lose half an inch there, will that make the seam, yeah, and the stripes meet? Yeah, and you saw how we sewed that zip in. Mm. The machine is dragging the fabric one way. Yeah. And then you turn, and then the, the press of it, and then the feed dog is dragging it the other way. Something's going to so, shift, isn't it? Something's going to shift, yeah. unless you bake everything in place first, but then that takes time. Yeah. And it's a time yeah. challenge. And that's a risk. Uh, let's look at Lizzie's top stitching because I think that's one thing we noticed. Um, you can't see it too well there. Uh, can we see it at the bottom? It's not too bad at the bottom. Uh, you can kind of see the pocket in the middle there. She didn't sadly have time oh, yeah. to finish, but you're right. It's a long way away from the zip, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Oh, I see that. Yeah. So the lining wasn't installed, was it? No. On this one. Okay. No, run, but run other out, things run look, out of time. Yeah, all the things look okay. The webbing looks good. It looks centered up at the top. Yeah. The hanging loop looks good. But, yeah, it's a bold move to top stitch in white on that. <laughs> Isn't it just? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we've got someone who, and I, Lizzie's one of my favorites already. I've, I, I've just thought, mm, she's one to watch. So I've started to panic already. Oh, this is week two, <laughs> round one, Lizzie, what's going on? <laughs> um, but one who I have, I've just suddenly, to, after watching that episode, thought, George, you know, I'm really liking you, is, uh, oh, uh, no, not that one. I went too far. I've gone the wrong way there. Uh, cover that one up is Tony, Tony oh, yeah. R, the one with the beanie hat on. I like, his, I like his, he seems to be a very, very competent sewer, but also very chilled out. So he's a bit like Damien from a couple of years ago, um, but he just oozes some suavery and confidence, but doesn't come across as arrogant at all. I just really enjoy watching him. He's very calm. And what did he say? Um, I'm just going to breathe. I'm just going to yeah. breathe and take my time. And all that. Yeah, I mean, that's very good advice. You know, just relax into it. It's all these things are like taking a test. And if yeah. you come into it and you're nervous and G'd up, and worried, then, um, you know, it steals yeah. energy and focus. But so by starting with you look at his he he now some of the sewers want to do more even though they shouldn't do because it's hard enough as it is he put in a little strip of camo didn't he you know above and beyond he didn't need that that could have just been a a, a plain sand panel where the zip goes in that pocket but he put that in and i think it worked really well because it's a kind of a, a low contrast effect isn't it with the sand and the you know, in the, in the khaki and the, okay, the bright orange is, is nice, but it, it did, it left it rather plain. Uh, yes. So I think that camo, that camo stripe yeah. that he put on, it did. And again, the drama is about high contrast, isn't yeah. it? With color. So you've got the green and orange, you've got the complementary colors there. And so it made a more effective uh, visually um, garment. Uh, let's take a look at Jilly's because I know uh, she struggled um, right from the beginning, really. Uh, partly only because of time. And she, we, I know we've had this conversation already about fabric, choice of fabric. Yeah. It must be hard if you like a fabric, but it may not necessarily be the right type of fabric. She wanted to use that fabric, didn't she? She did. She did. And I... I I'm so sorry that things didn't go particularly well for her because she had such a softness and a self-belief and a coolness about her. And I, I know you could have made that work. I think if she got the lining in, that the, if she got the lining in, the lining which was a heavier fabric than her outer fabric, then that would have helped posture that role. Uh, so that, I don't think it would have mattered that she, decided she wanted the lighter fabric on the outside. That's fine. And that's what I loved about her work and her attitude, which yeah. was just, no, this is what I want to do. I like this and I'm going to make it work. And of course, because, because this was so complicated and yeah. the time slot was very narrow, 
um, if she would have finished it, I think it would have worked out fine. And it's gorgeous, the, the, the webbing with her print. lovely, isn't it? The colours. Yeah. And, really and I think that's where, actually, I don't know what her ethos was, but I think she had the right one. I'm going on the sewing bee, and I'm just going to go on, and I'm going to make what I want to make. Uh, well, choose the fabric I want to, have fun doing it, and if I, if I don't... If I run out of time, I just run out of time. But she didn't change herself too much to fit in with the show. And there is something nice about that, isn't there? Because it means she probably had a better experience for it. Because if you change yourself too much to try and fit the show and, 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 and win, maybe, do you, do, you, do you not enjoy the process? I think she probably had a whale of a time, didn't she? I think so, too. And, and she said she wanted to bottle the process and, and revisit it and have yeah. it with her, you know. So she was so open and it was, that, it was that freedom and openness that she entered the whole process with. And, and she was doing it her way. And it came as no surprise, you know. No. She said, I'm, I'm doing this the way I want to do it. it we'll talk about later. We'll, we'll, re, we'll have a reprise of, of Jilly when we talk about the swimsuit. Because she said, it's going to be simple. Yeah. End of story. That's what I'm doing. Absolutely. So we'll come back to that. So there we are. There's our, our, our rucksacks. Um, and we had uh, Vicky at the top winning that one, uh, close with um, uh, Asthma and Jilly at the bottom. So let's just have a quick look at um, uh, Vicky's, wasn't it? Let's show you that uh, here. Is that on there? And I do that button. Oh, no, that was a, that was a transformation oh. challenge. Um, oh no, I don't have it on here, sadly. It's the one on right above my head there. That's that, that kind of gingham, wasn't it? That check L felt like I was going yeah, on a check. picnic. Yeah. And I think that really looked like a proper outdoor rugsack. I, I really liked her choice of, um, oh, canvas and web. There we go. Yes. Nice one, Stuart. That was really lovely. And she matched her checks. So again, you know, she chose something which gave her a higher degree of difficulty and mm. she managed it. Mm. Yeah, which shows yeah. it can be done. Um, but, do you know, I think some people just have, they can follow, some people can follow instructions better, can't they? And they can picture instructions. And I think she just she got that one, didn't she, in the bag. Right, let's go to <laughs> the transformation challenge, which was uh, was going to be fun from the beginning. Uh, you've got a windbreak. Uh, you've got to create some improvised rainwear. But then the added criteria was, oh, it's got to be exciting and sculpt sculptural. It's got to be an exciting sculptural garment. So, like, right, oh, I could have done rainwear. I would have done a cape or a poncho. <laughs> I would have been very simple. And now I've got this added pressure of... <gasps> Oh God, it's got to have some, something sculptural on. So some people literally went for sculptural, like the big bow of Mia. Um, and then some, like we were doing, talking about at the beginning, they created their sculpture with, with something small and, and discreet, but it was still sculptural, wasn't it? Yes. I, I, I wrote down waterproof, but unexpected. Now I didn't, that's a loose term, isn't it? Waterproof. Indeed. Um, so I had a problem with this one because I I liked the people that approached it from the point of view of, I'm going to make a cape, so it yeah. covers what I'm wearing, waterproof. Me too. Um, That's what I would have done. And so I had, I, yeah, this one, this one was, um, didn't work out quite the way I thought it was going to work out. And mm. uh, the, the ones I, the ones I liked were the ones that were, you know, it was almost like an umbrella from the neck, you know, to protect what she had on underneath, because... The word waterproof came in. So yes. the, the fabric is waterproof. Yeah. By nature, right? Because it's plastic. So but what does that mean when you're wearing it? What does waterproof mean when you when you're making an outfit? So there's a bit, bit of a trouble yes. point there for me. Because some of them were, mm. were more suitable for wearing in the rain than others. So you've got, which I thought really worked really well, nice and simple. Uh, oh, no, that's the wrong round. <laughs> get my buttons. Where's Lizzie? Here's Lizzie <laughs> here. Um, and let's do uh, that. Really simple. Okay. Really simple. Yes. 
and and yeah. she got called up because something about the trim. Well, the trim is extra. All right. Yeah. The brief was <laughs> something waterproof. So who cares about the trim? Yeah. I didn't. It, it, that wasn't part of the brief, really. She wanted to be able to keep her cocktail dry, didn't she? Right. <laughs> so have, have her hands perfect. out. She's still on the beach. Yeah. She can get her hands out and hold the glass, but her body is going to be protected by the rain. Maybe not her head, but her body will be. Um, yeah. And 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 um, yes. So, but I think this idea of uh, of of the sculptural element kind of took over so when and we and we knew that uh where's asthma's there as soon as we saw that and and esme went oh i love this sculptural neck thing i i just thought yeah she's gonna win but just imagine wearing that in the rain where's the rain gonna go well it's it's gonna run right down her neck this was a real <laughs> Deceptively simple. It was a set of rectangles. There was nothing to this. And I think Asma worked it out very well because she won herself a challenge with very little effort. Yeah, you know? Absolutely. A rectangle for the bodice, a couple of rectangles for the sleeve, a rectangle for the skirt, a rectangle for the collar. No, you know, yeah. nothing to it, really. And uh, as far as sculptural goes, yes, yes, I suppose. Each element was a sculpture in itself. When you put it all together, then it was yes. like, wow. But yeah. it wasn't water. It, I can't see that as being waterproof in any way, shape, <laughs> or form. But no. there you go. And that's, where, and that's where you know, and I can understand this now, that the round two is creativity. Yet, I know they that last week they wanted it to be wearable because poor the one that won... Uh, was creativity more than wearable, and this one they wanted wearable. Is it that, that they got a bit confused? Um, but creativity here clearly, clearly won. Even though perhaps you you'd get wet down your neck. I suppose the rest of your body will be <laughs> will be dry, but um, yeah. it it well, is it's fun. Also, she also did a very clever play on on the stripes. So it, it, although I'm saying it was just rectangles, which it yeah. was, but if you look at the sky, she has a central panel. Which she, which she then did per perpendicular work with the stripe. And, and that nice. took a little bit of work. But, you know, that was a very, very simple garment yeah. to put together. But it's the concept, isn't it? It's just she, she had that in her yeah. brain. This is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to really flip the, flip the stripes around and, and, and make it really interesting. And her work is level as well. If you look at the yeah. bodice, that's level. And so, um, yeah, it was well and, done. But and it, let's not it, forget. It, that's that's ninety minutes. That's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then exactly. let's uh, just have a quick look at me, is because from a, a sculptural point of view, uh, was like, well, yes, it had that big bow, <laughs> the big Esme bow on the front. But if you're wearing that in the rain, you're gonna get quite wet, aren't you? <laughs> but you're gonna look stunning, yeah. maybe. Yeah, uh, it's not gonna be wet, and it's just a top as well. So yeah, you know what happens to the rest of you in the rain. <laughs> But when you when you look at it there, you can see the bow a bit better. But there were some some phenomenal ones there, and some good good honest coats. You know, some of them did a small little kiddies coat, raincoat. They got a zip, some binding on there, yes. and everything. So to do that in ninety minutes, phenomenal. So uh, asthma obviously came first. The two Tony second and third, um, and Vicky at the bottom with the the little kiddies one with the the, with the tight crotch. <laughs> um, oh. But a, a, a certainly a mix there. Yeah. It's nice to see the variety. So some and people did we... a full length. Oh, and yes, some people yes. just did the top. The short. The, the ensemble with asthma. And then um, the, I liked, um, is it uh, Tony with the beanie? The, 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 the hat. Yeah. The knitted hat. I liked his the best, actually. I thought that was the most well thought out garment. Ooh, and I... That one, without a doubt, that one would have come in first. Yes, that absolutely. One. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, look that, how clever that is. Are, the shape worked. Look at those pockets. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And the sleeves, well, we weren't talking about fit, were we? We were talking about a transformation. So the fact and that this the sleeves is, might have been... This is where you think, yeah, it's a bit unfair when they pick out on that. Because some of the other sleeves are... Or all over the place, but yes, you're looking at mm -hmm. improvised rainwear and sculptural garment. Yeah, and look at how he across the waistline matched that red stripe with the yeah. waist and the sleeves. 
Look at that. Yeah, very, very clever. Right, well, uh, let's go to... Oh, let's get yeah. rid of Tony there. Um, so the, then the, the final challenge, uh, swimsuit. <sighs> but they couldn't just do a swimsuit. They had to have some sort of complex element to it. Well, that's going to suddenly make it a little bit harder, isn't it? What complex element would you have in a swimsuit? Because there's not much to a swimsuit, is there? No, it should fit the body so it doesn't fall off and when you're in the pool or swimming or whatever. And uh, I, I suppose the obvious thing is cutouts or, um, you know, we saw a belt that worked, a half yeah. belt. It was just in the ruffles. Oh, I like that. Um, I wouldn't have thought of that uh, sculptural sleeve of scuba. So that quite yeah. rightfully let's, um, let's go uh, and have really a fulfilled. Quick look. So uh, let's turn that one off. Uh, it was, uh, you said the one with the belt, didn't you? Um, I think that was, was that Mia? No. Really like um, um, the, the burnt orange with the one, yeah. it was one shoulder and um, yeah. Oh, not Lizzie. Oh, Lauren, there, there you we, go. Yeah. yeah, that was really lovely. Really lovely. And I think she had a bra cup in there as well which it gave it such a smooth line. Love that one. Mm. Yeah, stunning. Um, and who did you say? What was the other one you liked? The one, oh, with the, with the scuba sleeves of Mia, yes. Yes, really love that one. And that had that adjustable front to it, which was really interesting. So you could, you know, it's a beautifully tied bow as well. Just I thought that, that was out. so effective. And then the use of colour, again, that drama is set out with the contrasting colour. Yes, uh, to me, those colours don't do anything for me. I, I was interested in the pink and the coral. I don't know whether that goes, but as you say, it's drama in, in, in creating that contrast. Yeah. No, this was this deserved all the high praise it got. I really yeah. thought that, that's something I would never have expected. You know, a pleated sleeve made of scuba. You know, <laughs> yes. that the filled, work the whole, of that that the, must have been whole, demanding. It was in i in idea. It was quite simple because she set up a set of box pleats in her sleeve. So just you just take the sleeve, extend it with box, put it all back together, and it really fit beautifully. Yeah, that uh, was no, really well done. Uh, I I. I I know we're, we're here to talk about what worked and sometimes we do say, oh, that didn't necessarily work. Poor old Matthew with his his uh, top with the darts, um, which I don't think was supposed to be there, but he was trying to take out a lot of the excess, I think, wasn't he? So therefore yeah. folded. Um, and I'm sorry, Matthew, to do this. I've, I, I said this on the other one, but I've even got a close up of it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. Just got this to was pain a, there. This was beautifully set out. Yeah. I felt really bad that it didn't work yeah. for him, um, but I love the color combination. I yeah. love the style lines. I love the full skirt. What would have worked here is if he would have put this garment on, inside out, on his model, and marked the darts that way because he ended up sewing the darts kind of on the outside he did. of the fabric and he had to pinch you can see on the as we're looking at it on the right side yeah and it looks like he i think he yeah he sewed it by machine but what would have worked and he didn't i'm not sure if he had a bra cup in there as well if he had a bra cup in that would have taken up some of that excess he might have had to trim the cup yeah but he sewed the darts in and didn't then realign the sleeve line. So he ended up with a step. But if he would have put that on his model inside out and really got those darts pinned out well, sewed them and then put it back on mm. right side out, it, it could have worked. But to me, it's such a beautifully conceived Isn't idea it? that um, that I... I can disregard the, you know, the darts. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, if, 
mm. I could imagine if that if he got that right and and you know because we know what it's like with sewing things go wrong that could have been high up with garment of the week as well because it just totally. you just totally. love it and I could yeah. see that as a swimsuit you could jump in come out and then walk around no problems and also Absolutely. as a sunsuit sitting yeah. by the pool or walking around the pool I think it was a really versatile garment as you say you could have lounged in it it's it's almost you could just go out to a drinks do in it Absolutely. when you're on holiday or, or yeah. swim in it yeah it was beautifully done it did just that small thing that that really set it back yeah. um and we've all been there haven't we and that small thing talking about small thing Poor old asthma with the the iron. Oh, but look at that. Otherwise, isn't that some? That's striking. That's a a complex element to it, isn't it? That. Yeah, and that's a, an example of something that you. There's a high degree of difficulty. Um, it requires a massive amount of precision in the sewing. But I think here the colours really let her down. I think this looks quite drab. Yes, I wasn't. I was saying to Ting, I don't know whether the dark brown in the middle works. No. It doesn't set it off at all, really. It's a confusing garment for me, um, but I think she did a beautiful job in execution. Yes. But I, 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 I think if you're going to talk about drama in this garment, isn't he? Yeah. You know, it's lacking drama. Although she's, you know, she's done a beautiful job with the sewing. I think the colour scheme is, is not quite right. Um, and as I say, shame about the iron there, but we've all done that. Oh, we think we could just get away with it. I'll have the iron on cool. <laughs> oh, that's good. That crease went, I'll do it again just in case. But no, yeah. you don't get away with it the second time round. No, you don't. And it brings up a really interesting point. You can iron anything. Anything can be ironed, okay? Four-way stretch, leather, suede, lame, Anything can be ironed. Tool, you name the fabric. It's just what protection do you have on the iron and how are you setting it? So right. the, the best thing you can do, um, people out there, is to get a Teflon guard for your iron. Because that's nice and slippery. It's not going to stick. And it kind of it diffuses some of the heat. And then just check your settings and always do a test sample. It's This is the real pits when you you get your garment all finished and then you just go to touch it up. Yeah. And that's what and then, and then Avin, And now we're talking about the design of risk, right? Mm. We've talked about that many times. At any time of the st uh, stages of getting this garment, this job finished, whether you're inattentive or you're inexperienced or you have an accident, you can ruin the job. Mm. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened, right? Then it's yeah. just in it. Experience. You don't know how the iron is going to affect this cloth, but anything, anything can take to the iron. But you, you have to know how to handle it. Um, so we finished it. Any others that you wanted to look at on that end one? But otherwise... Uh, I would I... love to see the one with the centre panel and forgive me for not remembering who oh, the... That was... The was, but I... Is yeah, yeah, let's get let's get Matthews up. Uh, no, not Matthews. Tony, Tony W. Uh, yeah. There we go. And let's just. Oh, what's that one showing? Oh, where's Tony W? It was yeah. a, a a blue, a dark yeah, blue and a right. light. Uh, I've got to get rid of asthma. There we go. That one. There it is. Yeah. Love this. This was really so. And I have to say, on a separate note, I thought all these garments were beautifully modelled. Good point. They were yeah, he here. They, second there. They, they were sold so well by yeah. the catwalk model. This one I think was a really lovely idea. But the alignment of the contrasting colours didn't go quite well. But otherwise, I thought this was a real success. Uh, and everything else was correct with that one. And I've got I I, I like this one a lot as well. I've got the back. Uh, look at that back. Look, just that little tie under the hair. You yeah. can just imagine that coming out of the pool <gasps> and all eyes looking. <laughs> so, that's so pretty and just yeah. enough fluff in the skirt. Not, not yeah. too much. Yeah, it's really lovely. 
But when you look at that, so you look at that one and uh, um, very similar in a way in, 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 in length and what they're doing on the front. Yes, yes. Much fuller yeah. with the, 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 the pink, white and light blue. Much fuller skirt. This one was much more A-line. But it did move in, in a similar didn't way, it? didn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, I really like this one. Uh, and we had, um, and rightly so, understandably so, we've already talked about it, but let's just get Mia's um, back up. Is this one Mia? Yep, yeah, with her. Oh, no, that's not that one. Not that Mia. Um, where is she? Oh, I've got to find it now. Uh, I don't think, oh, Garment of the Week. There we go. I've even labelled it there. So she got Garment of the Week, um, which was wonderful. Congratulations. But sad, we had to say... Uh, goodbye to Jilly, didn't we? Oh, I'll, I'll miss her so much. I just loved her attitude. I loved her presence and her openness to the whole process. And I'd love to, I'd, I'd love to meet her. I mean, if anyone yeah. out there knows Jilly, tell her to call me, will you? I'd love to talk to her. I really would. Look, um, but yeah, really. You just think of the year she's go. been sewing so long. She knows what she's doing. She knows how to sew. It's just yeah, that yeah. the time element of the show, isn't it? That's it. Yeah. And I think her, her just firm belief in what she wanted to do. Um, so, that, you know, her swimsuit didn't have that dramatic element in it, did it? Mm. It didn't have that complexity that the judges really no. wanted to see. No. But that's all right. She thought her cloth would carry it. And um, there you are. And that's it. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that, that's the nature of the sewing bee, isn't it? You get your favourites and sometimes they go out early. Uh, as I say, I remember uh, last year with Marnie, the vet, out by, I think, week three. And it was like, what? I thought she was going to get to the final. Um, but that's why we love the programme in that respect. Um, we do. And, and we love going into detail because I know they can't do it there because many of us are sewers, yeah. we're learners, and some of us have been sewing for years, but we still pick up new tips. And that's why we like talking about it here. And I can't wait to do a live. It'll be lovely to do a live because we'll be having people in the comments chatting away and asking us questions. So uh, well, let, us, let us know. Um, we'll do that probably week four or week five. But in the meantime... Thank you, Carol. The hard work tonight. You've worked very hard. <laughs> Take measure oh, yeah. off. Absolutely. <laughs> Glass of wine. Reach out. <laughs> and we'll see you all next week uh, when we're going off to West Africa. Can't wait for week three of the Sewing Bee. See you next week, everyone. Cheers, Carol. Bye. Bye. Bye.